Hello, folks. Welcome back to Chris Wyatt Reports. Listen, we all make mistakes. People are human. Mistakes were made. Errors are committed. That's true. But some folks are just dishonest or lazy or incompetent. You decide for yourself. And this is a story about news reporting in South Africa's legacy media, specifically News 24. Now, this article by Lisa Lee Solomons from the 7th of January, 2023 is titled, Three Children Killed After Driver Runs Over Nine Pedestrians in Pretoria. It's about an apparent vehicular, vehicular homicide or several homicides, actually. Now, compare that story to how News 24 reports on this 8th of January story about Cyril Ramaphosa. The important word here is apparent. The word is used erroneously in the Solomon story and omitted in the Ramaphosa story. The problem is that it is misleading in the Solomon story in which three children were killed by implying ambiguity when there is none. Eyewitnesses have already told police that the suspect fled the scene. So there's no reason to say that he allegedly abandoned his vehicle and fled the scene when eyewitnesses have already told the police that that's the case. There's no allegedly here. In the Ramaphosa story titled, Do Not Fear White People, Their Time Has Passed, Ramaphosa tells Mazelport racist attack victims. We see an assertion of a fact, not in evidence. This appears to be a case of libel. Additionally, it's inherently dishonest. As yet, there is no formal determination or evidence of racism. News 24 reports the journalist's opinion as fact in a news story, not an opinion editorial article. In this article, Bongkile Makupe not only may have committed libel, but may have opened the path to a criminal injury case against both the author and the lazy editor and the publisher News 24. And that's the problem with the legacy media, all media, in fact, you know, uh, upstart, you know, emerging media, social media. But the legacy media should have ombudsmen and editors who are responsible for this. There was no reason whatsoever to say that the suspect allegedly abandoned his car and fled. Witnesses saw it and reported to the police. Conversely, there's no justification whatsoever for the author to claim that the events that took place in the free state were racist. That's an opinion based on watching a clip of a selected portion of an event that allegedly occurred. There's been no formal investigation to declare it a racist incident. There's been no outcome. Calling a racist incident before the facts are in is liable and subject potentially to a criminal injury case. This is the irresponsible behavior of professional journalism around the world, not just in South Africa. I'm not picking on South Africa. This is the case everywhere. It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. While the media look down their noses at um, citizen journalists, you'll find that citizen journalists, many of them, go to far greater lengths to verify their sources, get multiple sources, and give analysis that isn't based on rushing to judgment or stating facts, not in evidence. Of course, many citizen journalists, that's all they do. But the legacy media does it each and every day. And here's yet another example of shameful conduct by a media outlet in South Africa. No reason to say allegedly in a Solomon's article. You can simply state witnesses told the police and gave statements to that effect. That's the facts, not allegedly. What, he just disappeared through a Star Trek teleporter? How else did he get out of there? Seriously. And in the Ramaphosa case, there's no evidence of racism here. That's your opinion, Mr. Makupe or Mrs. Makupe, whichever you are. Not a fact in evidence. And it could open your publisher up to a case of libel. Shame, shame, shame. But that's the world we live in today, folks. The truth is the first casualty of this nonsense. Take care.